Breaking news here on the Dallas Cowboys. We're not just talking about the roster cuts made by Dallas. A new sponsor alert for you as well. It's True Classic Tees, the best-fitting T-shirts a man can buy, especially if you're like me and maybe there's a little bit of a dad bod going on. We'll tell you all about them later on in today's show, but you get 25% off when you use promo code CHAT at trueclassic.com slash chat. Links in the comments and in the description of today's show. Before we break down the five roster cuts, maybe one big notable one, maybe two in there. What is the biggest takeaway is who was not a part of the roster moves today. That is wide receiver Michael Gallup. Today was the first day teams could place players on the reserve pup list, would free up a, a roster spot, would also force him to miss at least the first four games of the season. The Cowboys did not put Gallup on that pup list. The expectation, as we've talked about right here on the Cowboys report, has been he will not go on that reserve pup list. The Cowboys trying hard to keep him off of that so he could play in the first three weeks, maybe week two, maybe week three, or at minimum by week four for Dallas. Gallup was, of course, banged up a lot last year, even beyond the torn ACL. He missed time at the beginning of the year with a calf injury. Didn't produce the way we saw in 2020 without Dak Prescott. Or even in 2021, or 2019, excuse me, when he had his best year ever, over 1,000 yards as the team's go-to vertical threat. Folks, this is why you guys subscribe. When news happens, we break it down for you right here on the Cowboys Report. We're going to break down the five moves. Not all cuts made today. Hit that big red button, though, if you haven't already. The first cut is the most notable one, Liram Hyralahu. He's out of here. The Cowboys kicker who was supposed to be the loser to Jonathan Garibay. Then Garibay got cut. And then they bring in Brett Maher. Hira Lahu is the next kicker released by the Dallas Cowboys, freeing up one Brett Maher, at least for now, to be the lead kicker for this job. I hadn't really seen much of a favorite. Now we know one. Hira Lahu has been released by the Dallas Cowboys. Is that leaves only Brett Maher on the roster for the 53-man or the, the 18 man roster right now. Maher would appear to be the favorite at this point, although I will make this note. I don't necessarily think it is fair to assume that Maher is guaranteed the job. I still think there is a possibility of the Cowboys choosing to go out and look at other options at the kicking position, but we'll have to wait and see on that front. For now, Maher is the only kicker on the Dallas Cowboys roster. So be honest with me in the comments section. Do you trust Brett Maher? Y for yes, you do. N for no, you do not. Sound off for me in the comments section. Do you have faith in Brett Maher as the Cowboys kicker? This is the pinned comment on today's show. So if an ad break comes on YouTube, take advantage of it. Head down there, type in Y for yes or N for no. Let's talk Jeremy Sprinkle. Now, when Todd Archer broke the news of the roster moves, he labeled Sprinkle as injured as just part of the moves list. So I am reading that as he's been placed on IR. And it could just be an injury release, but I view it as, in as injured reserve. We'll know for certain in a couple hours once the Cowboys officially make those moves known. But he is dealing with an Achilles injury right now. Him going on IR would end his season, barring the weird. Oh, he worked out a, an injury settlement. Then he got waived, and somebody else picked him up. It seems pretty unlikely there. I didn't think Sprinkle was going to make this team. Uh, he'd kind of fallen behind the tight end race at the current moment with guys like Sean McEwen, Peyton Hendershot, who we'll get to here a little bit more in depth. But first... Let's tell you more about our new sponsor here at the Cowboys Report. That is True Classic Tees. You know, most men's t-shirts kind of designed to fit on the skinny model mannequin or have six packs. And, you know, I don't have a six pack outside of the one in my fridge. Uh, the, the, the dad bod's been real for me as of late. And I've always had issues finding t-shirts that fit right. You know, this one's too way, way, way too baggy on the arms. This one's too big in the waist or too tight in the waist or too loose or too tight up top here. Not the issue with true classic tees. They taper off towards the bottom, but they fit tighter and properly around the chest so it's not like, you know, looking man boob or whatever out there. They are designed to make bigger guys look slimmer and slimmer guys look buffer. It's time to dress yourself properly. 25% off at trueclassic.com slash chat when you use promo code chat, which should be automatically applied. But if not, the promo code chat will work. You also get free shipping with purchases over $100. Risk-free 30-day return po policy. Stay classy with True Classic Tees. Links in the comments section and in the description. 
The tight end battle right now is pretty clear to me. Uh, Dalton Schultz, tight end one. Jake Ferguson is tight end two. And we'll have to wait and see if it's Sean McEwen and or Peyton Hendershot at tight end three slash four for the Cowboys this year. So predict this for me. How many tight ends will make the Cowboys 53-man roster? It is three or it is four. Those are your only options. So make your predictions for me right now in the comments section. The next roster move made by the Cowboys, Christian Sam, the linebacker uh, signed out of the USFL right before camp, right around the eve of camp, has been waived injured. Allow me to explain what the hell that designation means if you didn't watch our initial 90 to 85 man roster cut video. What happens is Sam will go through waivers, and in the event he is claimed, well, the new team gets him, and they can't put him on IR with the same thing because that's just what happened there. If he goes unclaimed, which I feel confident saying no one's going to claim Christian Sam, he will then revert to injured reserve, and there could be a scenario in which the Cowboys give him an injury settlement, he gets cut from IR, Cowboys pay him not that much money, only about three games or worth or, or so, somewhere in that range, and then he can go sign with a new team if he wants to. That leaves the Cowboys with the following at linebacker. You've got Micah Parsons, Leighton Van Der Esch, Anthony Barr, Jabril Cox, Luke Gifford, Devin Harper, Malik Jefferson, and Story Jackson. It makes sense to cut a linebacker. You're hoping to probably keep one of Gifford, Harper, maybe both, but you're going to use a lot of safety, so I doubt you carry six linebackers And when it's all said and done since Curse and Bell can play linebacker. Story Jackson could be a prime practice squad candidate, but Christian Sam no longer a member, at least for now, of the Cowboys roster. So how many years have you been a true diehard Cowboys fan? The longest without cheating does win, by the way. Let me know how long you've been cheering for America's team in the comment section. Another normal cut here, Quandre Mosley, the backup corner who was alongside Isaac Taylor Stewart among the UDFAs this year. Mosley was the one who was signed kind of late in the UDFA process. The Cowboys had leaked the 19 names, then they added Mosley a little bit after that. They always like those Kentucky corners, right? Kelvin Joseph, Cowboys legend Chris Westry. Unfortunately, Mosley now joins the ranks of the Cowboys legends released today as the Cowboys go from 85 men to 80 on their active roster. You will see more of the same in week three of the preseason. Kelvin Joseph, Nashawn Wright, Deron Bland, and Isaac Taylor Stewart are going to get a lot of playing time in that third and final preseason game. But that's where we sit at the cornerback room. Mosley was not going to make this 53-man roster. Long shot for practice squad. I thought Isaac Taylor Stewart was a better fit there. Remains the case. To receiver, yeah, not a huge surprise. The receiver ends up getting caught. Jaquari Roberson, the rookie UDFA out of Wake Forest, also on the released list for the Cowboys. More on him and where the wide receiver room currently sits. But first, which roster cut, or if you want to include Sprinkle going to IR as part of it, it's not a huge surprise to me. Which one surprised you guys the most? I'm going with the kicker. I was not ready uh, for them to make a move at that position, but let me know which cut surprised you guys the most. I'm typing in Liam Hyralahu, but sound off for me because I care about your opinions too in the comments section. Roberson is the name we at least said a few times during our watch parties right here on the Cowboys Report because he made some nice special teams plays. But the Cowboys had enough options when it comes to who's going to be wide receiver four, five, six, seven, eight, they are still fairly deep, even with all the injuries right now at wide receiver between Gallup and James Washington. A lot of these moves come down to how do we get to that third and final preseason game, right? You don't need a receiver when you're going to play Tolbert, play Dennis Houston, play Fayoko, play Vasher, probably not play Kevontae Turpin at this point, play Brandon Smith, and play Dontario Drummond. Plus, Drummond, by the way, was the player the Cowboys went to to be the backup punt returner. You're not going to let Turpin back there. You need somebody to at least call fair catches for you. I think Drummond is that guy for the Cowboys in week three of the preseason. He's a prime practice squad candidate alongside Brandon Smith. Those were the five roster moves made today by the Dallas Cowboys, plus a fairly noteworthy injury update on Michael Gallup. If you have any questions on why the Cowboys cut those guys or anything involving America's team, I got you covered. DM me on Twitter at WhatGoingDowning.